use our psalm today as our call to worship. I invite you to join me in reading it responsibly. Uh, I'll read both parts, but uh, if you would respond at home with the bold print. Psalm 96. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless the name of the Lord, proclaim God's salvation from day to day. Declare God's glory among the nations and God's wonders among all peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, more to be feared than all gods. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder and all that is in it. Let the field be joyful and all that is therein. Then shall the trees of the wood shout for joy at your coming, O Lord, for you come to judge the earth. You will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with your truth. God rest ye merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. For Jesus Christ our Savior was born upon this day to save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. From God our Heavenly Father a blessed angel came, and unto certain shepherds brought tidings of the same, how that in Bethlehem was born the Son of God by name. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy, oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Now to the Lord sing praises, all you within this place, and with true love and brotherhood each other now embrace. This holy tide of Christmas all other doth deface. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Hello and welcome to our Christmas worship at Heart of Illinois Lutheran Parish. My name is Jeff Schlesser. I'm the pastor of Heart of Illinois Lutheran, which is made up of Emanuel Lutheran Church south of Compton and First Lutheran Church in Lee, where I stand right now. We come to you live on tape via the internet uh, during this time of pandemic. Uh, we're so glad you chose to join us. We have a special, special service for you today. You've already heard one of our pieces of music, but that is just the tip of the iceberg. We have much to come, and we hope that you are inspired uh, by this worship service. Throughout the service, you'll see greetings from our people uh, as they uh, made short videos uh, from their homes or other places uh, to share a Christmas greeting with others. Uh, we start with uh, the most extensive of those uh, Christmas greetings. The Simpson family uh, did a greeting which is more than a greeting, uh, but they wanted to bring a smile to your face, uh, which they did to me when I watched this. So we start with this wonderful little, little video uh, written and produced by Cheryl Simpson and uh, getting the rest of her family, Bethany uh, and Olin and Winston, and of course, uh, Stephen to sing uh, as they put this video together. Happy holidays, everyone. We've had to do many things differently this year. And as we go to spread our Christmas blessings, we may have to get a little bit more creative. With that being said, what you're about to witness is a musical tale of the birth of baby Jesus told from the perspective of someone who was there, a donkey. My father, Stephen, portrays the donkey 
and is also the lead singer. My brother Olin, my sister Bethany, and my mother Cheryl all skillfully navigate the other puppets. Many Christmas blessings and a few laughs from our family to yours. Enjoy. Campbell said, Donkey, where are you going? I said, I don't know, but it's mighty important. Goat said, Donk, when you coming back? I said, I'd love to talk, but I gotta make tracks. Joseph is calling me from the gate. Mary's little baby is on the way. Out in the dark of the night, dark of the night, dark of the night. guided by the angel's light. the angel's light, did my best to look out for them. Look out, look out. So I took the back roads to Bethlehem. Bethlehem. I prayed to God to guide my feet, Mary and Joseph, and the baby and me. Have you ever wondered? How it all went down Well now you're getting it straight From the donkey's mouth The king of the whole world Sitting on my shoulders We were such a sight to see Mary and Joseph and the baby and me Shining in the midnight sky ooh, 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 ah. Jesus was born right before my eyes ooh, ooh, ah. We all joined in when the angels sang ah, ah, ah. I sang bass and made the low notes ring ooh, ooh, ah. Camels and the cows and the shepherds and the sheep Praise the Lord with the wise men three Have you ever wondered Getting it straight from the donkey's mouth. The king of the whole world sitting on my shoulders. We were such a sight to see. Mary and Joseph and the baby and me. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who was in the beginning, who makes a dwelling among us, and who covers us with justice and mercy. Amen. Brothers and sisters, as we celebrate the birth of the Christ child in the manger, it's appropriate for us also to celebrate and give thanks for our new birth, our new birth in Christ that we receive in baptism. Joined to Christ in the waters of a baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word 
You created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea, you led your people, Israel, from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water in your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Share.
Let us pray. Almighty God, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence and in the last day wake to the brightness of his glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Mentals wish you a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Our first reading on this Christmas is from the ninth chapter of Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exalt when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the trampling warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor. Mighty God, 
everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Here ends the reading. Said the night wind to the little lamb, Do you see what I see? Way up in the sky, little lamb, Do you see what I see? A star, a star, Dancing in the night with a tail as big as a kite, with a tail as big as a kite. Said the little lamb to the shepherd boy, Do you hear what I hear? Ringing through the sky, shepherd boy, Do you hear what I hear? A song, a song, High above the tree, With a voice as big as the sea, With a voice as big as the sea. Said the shepherd boy to the mighty king, Do you know what I know? In your palace warm, mighty king, Do you know what I know? A child, a child, Shivers in the cold, let us bring him silver and gold. Let us bring him silver and gold. Said the king to the people everywhere, Listen to what I say. Pray for peace, people everywhere. Listen to what I say. The child, the child, sleeping in the night, he will bring us goodness and light. He will bring us goodness and life. Merry Christmas, everyone. Peace be with you. Merry Christmas from the Eames family. The second reading is from the second chapter of Paul's letter to Titus. The grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. Here ends the reading. Holy child within the manger, long ago yet ever near, 
Come as friend to every stranger, come as hope to every fear. As you live to heal the broken, greet the outcast, free the bound. As you taught us love unspoken, teach us now where you are found. Once again we tell the story, how your love for us was shown, when the image of your glory wore an image like our own. Come and lighten us your wisdom, come and fill us with your grace. May the fire of your come passion, kindle every land and race. Holy child within the manger, lead us ever in your way. So we see in every stranger how you'll come to us today. In our lives and in our living, give us strength to live as you, that our hearts might be forgiving and our spirits strong and true. From the Schlesinger household, to all of you, a, a very, very blessed, blessed Christmas, Christmas to everyone. everyone. Peace be with you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to Emmanuel. Happy New Year. And peace be with you. Well, that was loud. Our Christmas Gospel is from the second chapter of Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary... Mary treasured these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them.
This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and our Lord, Jesus the Christ. Amen.
what you just saw was a fast and furious slideshow of all the of pictures of all the nativity sets that members of Heart of Illinois Lutheran Parish submitted that we used during our worship videos in the four weeks of Advent. Now, that was very fast and you didn't get a look, good look at all of them, but simply uh, watching that, you could notice the wide variety of nativities, uh, wide variety of the depictions of the scene of Jesus' birth. Uh, sometime in the future, I'll be, uh, you'll be able to view all of those uh, at a much slower pace so you can take them in. It'll probably be available on our YouTube channel, but I wanted to show you those real quick uh, as we got into our sermon uh, today. I was amazed when I looked at this, uh, and I hope you were too, at the variety of uh, nativity sets. There are so many different influences that go into uh, how a artist or graphic designer, whoever makes these nativity sets, how they uh, end up coming out. Oh, there's some common elements, but they all look different, a little bit different. They are influenced by culture, uh, by uh, ethnic makeup, uh, they are in, influenced by a whole lot of things. You saw nativity sets in there that were obviously from other continents, from Central America or, or Africa. You, you saw uh, nativity sets in there that were, were influenced by pop culture. There was a, there was a snow globe with the peanuts as a, uh, the peanut characters, uh, as part of the nativity. Uh, many different things go into how, and we depict the nativity in so many different ways. And it's pretty amazing. And, and it's great that we do that because we experience God in so many ways. And God comes to us in such a personal way, but not a private way, a personal way that we are to share with one another. And so we've been sharing for the last four weeks, and you saw the compendium of those tonight. For the message, rather than give you a three-point sermon about Christmas and about uh, what it all means to us, I just want to do more reflection on this nativity. And I want to reflect by using three paintings. I want to share with you three paintings from the Renaissance that depict the nativity in a way we probably wouldn't do today, but as we reflect on those and look at those, perhaps we'll get a deeper understanding. Understanding's not the right word deeper appreciation, a, a deeper insight into the, the good news of what's happening on this night of Jesus's birth. Now, as I share these pictures with you, uh, much, many of the words are those of Philip Google, an author and art critic uh, who reflects on these paintings. Now, the first picture I want to share with you is uh, called The Nativity. It's actually not a painting in a gallery, but it's an altarpiece in a church in Hamburg, Germany, and it was uh, painted by a man named Meister Franke. Now, as you can see in the depiction of the birth, uh, he depicts it before a cave uh, that is topped with a miniature landscape instead of the customary shed or stable. This is the only known uh, surviving panel painting showing this type of setting, which historically might be more accurate than that of a stable. Now the angel's message to the shepherd you can see in the upper right hand corner of this painting. Uh, it's in front of a red sky that's full of parallel rows of gold stars. Now this red sky, especially in the many paintings of Franca, uh, the red alludes to the passion of Jesus. So uh, right away at the birth, Franca is alluding to Jesus' death. Rather curious and unique uh, feature uh, of this night scene. Now, the naked infant who lies on the ground and, and the omission of Joseph indicate that Franca uh, used the story of Jesus' birth as told by St. Bridget. Uh, a medieval Swedish mystic. Uh, she received uh, the, a vision of the birth uh, when she was uh, had started her community. Uh, and in this vision, uh, the, the child emanated light that was, was so bright that it, 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 all other lights paled according to it. And in her vision, 
There was no Joseph as, as Mary had escaped. And you see Joseph not in the scene as Mary had escaped uh, to, for some alone time to adore her son. And, and that, that band of cloth, it's called a, a, uh, it's called a, a bander roll, uh, has the Latin words for my Lord and my son, giving us insight into what Mary is thinking, much like a, a bubble would do in a comic strip today. The smaller uh, life-size figures on the, uh, of the angels surrounding her emphasize the importance of Mary. And, and they're spreading out her blue uh, mantle, uh, forming kind of an improvised sanctuary around her and the child. Uh, it, it, makes, it makes it definite that the scene is as much a scene of Mary's adoration of her newborn son as much as it is of the nativity. Now, above at the top, God's uh, bust length figure floats within his cloud as, as he blesses uh, Mary and her adoration. The rays of light uh, falling from his lips intersect those surrounding Jesus and Mary's heads, bathing all three in a warm luminescence and, and reminding us of this light's divine source. Painted as part of an altarpiece commissioned by a merchant's guild in Hamburg, Germany, which traded with England, the nativity's vivid contrasts of warm colors impart a naive and winsome mystery while placing Jesus' birth in the context of his passion. That's the vision of Meister Franca. Let's now hear sung a new story of the nativity, Mary's boy child. A long time ago in Bethlehem, so the Holy Bible say, Mary, boy child, Jesus Christ was born on Christmas Day. Hark now, hear the angels sing, a new king born today. And man will live forevermore because of Christmas Day. Trumpets sound and angels sing, listen to what they say. That man will live forevermore because of Christmas Day. While shepherds watch their flock by night, them see a bright new star. And then them hear a choir sing, the music come from afar. Now Joseph and his wife Mary came to Bethlehem that night. They find no place to bear her child, not a single room was in sight. Hark now, hear the angels sing, a new king born today. And man will live forevermore because of Christmas Day. Trumpets sound and angels sing, listen to what they say. That man will live forevermore because of Christmas Day. Then by and by they found a nook in a stable all forlorn. And in a manger cold and dark, Mary's little baby was born. Hark now, hear the angels sing, a new king born today. And man will live forevermore because of Christmas Day. Trumpets sound and angels sing, listen to what they say. That man will live forevermore because of Christmas Day. Trumpets sound and angels sing, listen to what they say. That man will live forevermore because of Christmas. 
Christmas Day. The second picture I'd like to share with you, it's called The Nativity. Uh, it uh, was painted somewhere between 1420 and 1425, right around the same time as that last one, uh, by uh, a guy named Meister of Flamel. Um, the principal figures in this painting, uh, they crowd themselves around the front and sides of a deteriorating weathered stable set obliquely from the left foreground. The dilapidated, the dilapidated state of the stable signifies the old world before Jesus' birth. In the background stretches a complex, imaginary landscape depicted in painstaking detail, bathed in silvery gray daylight. The landscape, as well as the angels in their billowing gowns and banner rolls, reflects the influence of French painting of the time. Now, a number of legends about Jesus' birth also influenced uh, Meister of uh, Flamel's uh, painting. For instance, in the right foreground, he shows uh, the two midwives said to be present at the birth. Uh, that's tradition, not biblical. The one facing us extends her right hand. It is now healed. Uh, after withering when she doubted Mary's virginity, so the legend goes. One of the angels had told her to touch the child, which restored her hand. The Meister of Flamel uh, also depicted Mary garbed in white and kneeling, as St. Bridget describes her, the same St. Bridget we talked about with the last painting. Uh, the backgrounds, brown, green, and gray tonality serve as a foil, that sets off the bright colors and ornamentation of the principal figure's raiment. The shepherds you can see peering through the half-open door, right behind Mary, peering through the half-open door in awe as they counter, encounter the elegantly garbed angels and midwives uh, with their unsophisticated expressions and poses. There are two other details that reflect uh, St. Bridget's account of the birth. Uh, the child uh, lies naked on the ground, uh, and Joseph shields a lighted candle in his left hand. Shielding the candle makes perfect sense. The light brought by the Christ child, symbolized as in Meister Franca's picture by the golden rays cursing from his body, exceeds any natural light in this world. His radiant brings life itself. For St. Bridget, it, and this is a quote, it totally annihilated the candle flame's material light. Now you may have missed it, but the sun rising above the left horizon further emphasizes the power of the infant's divine radiance. There's an eye at its center emitting light rays. The celestial image symbolizes the child and heralds the rising of a new age marked by his birth. And so we have the nativity as painted by Meister of Flamel. If you'd like to see it in person someday, head on over to Lundry where it's in the National Gallery. Now let us join together, pondering this child in the manger, singing with Olivia Ross, What Child Is This? What child is this who lay to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping? Whom angels greet with anthems sweet while shepherds watch our keeping. This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him, Lord, the babe, the son of Mary. Why lies he in such mean a state where ox and ass are feeding? 
Good Christian, fear for sinners, hear the silent word is bleeding. Nail spear shall pierce him through the cross, be born for me, for you. Hail, hail the word made flesh, the babe, the son of man. So bring him in sun's gold and myrrh, compass and king to own him. The king of kings, salvation brings, let loving hearts enthrone him. Raise, raise the song on high, the virgin sings for lullaby. Joy, joy, for Christ is born, the babe, the son of Mary. The final picture I'd like to share with you is called Night Nativity. It comes to us uh, from France, and it is by an artist uh, named uh, Gierchen Tote St. Jean. Uh, it was painted in the late uh, 15th century, sometime between 1480 and 1485, so it's about 60 years newer than the last two paintings. Now, angels uh, serve as a visual entry point into this small panel painting by uh, Gierchen, which has been described as one of his most tender and poetic works. An aura of calm pervades the ruined stable's glowing interior. The reserved expressions and gestures of the simplified figures of Mary, Joseph, and the angels are lost in devotion over the Holy Child. Shadows mute their forms, and the incandescence bathes the oval faces and expressive hands of Mary and the angels so that they seem spotlighted against the darkness. This heavenly light radi radiating from the child's glowing body remains the stable interior's only illumination. By limiting the light to this source, Gierchen draws all our attention to the infant as the source of divine and mat material radiance. Not only is the child's radiance dominant in the stable, it outshines the angelic light overpowering the shepherd's bonfire, which you can see up above. As uh, the angel announces to the shepherds uh, about the birth of the child. Only the child's luminescence remains important for Gierchen, who, like the Meister of Flamel, has depicted Mary and Joseph without a halo. So we have three other depictions of the nativity. Now let's listen to Jill and Julia Holzer as they too ponder it from the eyes of Mary. That your baby boy would one day walk on water. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? child that you delivered will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would give sight to a blind man? Mary, did you Baby boy has 
did you know that your baby boy is Lord of all creation? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day rule the nations? Did you know? Christmas, Heart of Illinois Lutheran Parish, from the Fifers and Papa. Merry Christmas and a blessed new year. Usually at this time of the service, uh, we give some announcements of what's going on at the parish. Uh, I'm not going to give those uh, during this video. Just let me say that you're all invited to join us on Sundays uh, for our worship video. It's available on this YouTube channel uh, and it, it's um, put out every Sunday morning at 5 a.m. So please join us uh, and there you can find out how to be more uh, active in the parish. Special thank you to all who have helped put this service together. As you have already seen, and there are still more to come, there are many people who have been active in putting this service together. Please, uh, after the service is over, stay tuned. During the postlude, we will run uh, the acknowledgement of all those people. Uh, I'd like you to know who it is that participated in this service. It is the time for the offering. We appreciate very much uh, all offerings that come in to support the mission of our uh, parish. As our ELCA presiding bishop uh, said, the church is not closed. The doors to our sanctuaries might be closed, but the church is still open. We are still uh, open for business, doing mission, reaching out, praying for those uh, who are sick, uh, and doing all we can to spread the good news of Jesus. So, uh, Please, uh, it would be appropriate at this time to offer a Christmas offering uh, to the parish, and we appreciate any that comes in. I know many of you mail them in. Uh, many of you do that by electronic means. Thank you to that. Uh, those of you who are visiting this service, uh, you are welcome to uh, offer, make an offering uh, through electronic means. Uh, you can go to either one of our congregation's websites, uh, and there is a donate button there. That said, let us turn to God and, and give thanks uh, for the things that God has given us, which we now offer back to God and ask God to bless them. Let us pray. Gracious God, you came to us as one unknown. Bring joy and salvation to the earth. Nourish us at your banquet table, that with all who welcome your birth, we may proclaim your peace. Revealed in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. From our home to yours. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Let us confess our faith in Jesus Christ. This, today we use the Christmas creed. I invite you to join with me. I believe that the baby whose birth we come to celebrate tonight is the Messiah, the Lord. I believe that the baby in the manger is the Word become flesh. It is God incarnate. I believe God sent this child for me and for the world to live, to die, to be raised again, so that whoever should believe in him will be saved. 
I believe that Jesus, who was laid in that manger so many years ago, is the Christ and is my Lord. Amen. Gathered as one in the Holy Spirit, let us pray as our Lord first taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. 
Amen. And now, brothers and sisters, Almighty God, who sent the Holy Spirit to Mary, proclaimed joy through the angels, sent the shepherds with good news, and led the Magi by the star, bless you on this day through the Word made flesh. Amen. Oh,